Hey there, we're back with Comic Convos, presented by Black Magic Design. I am one of your hosts, Danielle Beckman. Welcome back. We just had an awesome segment with Shauna Germain and Timothy Reese. So we are so excited to have you back again. We are partnering with the League of Filmmakers and Cinematography for Actors to bring you this live stream directly from the Gaslamp District in downtown San Diego during Comic-Con. I hope you all have been having an amazing con weekend. And let's get to our next guest. I'm very excited to welcome Francesca Escariga to the stream. Francesca is an award-winning producer, writer, and director, and she likes to utilize the visual medium of storytelling and written word to empower the voiceless and create meaningful stories that induce positive change in society. Yes! Love that. She also serves, which we'll talk about, as an event programmer and manager for New Filmmakers Los Angeles and Little Cinema as well. She has brought to life some Academy Award qualifying and award-winning films and series. She's worked on so many notable Hollywood projects such as Netflix, Bridgerton, have you heard of it? Uh, Queen Charlotte, I could keep going. Um, also, ooh, The Legend of Vox Machina. Yes, talk about Comic-Con. Yeah. So cool. Uh, she was awarded Best Producer at the 2022 Orion Film Awards in New York City and recognized by the City of Los Angeles' Mayor's Office for fostering the future generation of entertainment professionals through new filmmakers Los Angeles' Stage 5 Cine Sessions Mentorship Program. That is so cool. And say that 10 times fast. <laughs> that is so awesome. Welcome to the show, Francesca. Thank you for having me here. Yes. It's my first Comic-Con, just so you know. Okay, so see, so. this is really cool. So this is her first Comic-Con, everyone, which is so rad. I want to hear, what are your first impressions? What's your first take? What are you learning about your first con? Honestly, energy is out of this world. Yeah. And honestly, seeing the IPs come to life, it's just beyond your wildest imagination that it's possible for people to support the art that we're creating to this level. Right? It's just amazing how, you know, your the figment of your imagination just comes to life That's and so people cool. actually support that and also like make it their personality. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes. So that it's, is it's, it's been so great. Cool. Have you seen any favorite like cosplay like costumes or anything? Well honestly yesterday I saw the whole Barbie gang. Oh so my gosh. I, I was living for that. Oh my gosh, that's oh, yeah. so cool. Were they on rollerblades as well? Yes. <laughs> the whole shebang. Really. Okay, that's awesome. So you didn't do, co did you go do cosplay this year? Unfortunately, no. Okay. But this is me probably channeling okay. like Kris Jenner or something. Okay, perfect. <laughs> is it giving that? <laughs> I, I'm obsessed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What if there was like a Barbie cosplay and then like the Kardashian cosplay Seriously. and they like had a battle in the middle of the convention floor? Okay. Honestly. I think I just created an event, right? That oh. would be so fun. We'll plan it for sure. <laughs> okay. We'll plan for it. For next year. Awesome. <laughs> no, I just, I love this so much. And um, I, I really like to get the, you know, kind of first impressions for people on their first time. Yeah. So if you were to come back next year, what have you learned? Would you do anything different? Like, are there any tips or tricks you've learned that you're like, you know, actually next year I'd be better prepared X, Y, Z way? Honestly, have a schedule prepared. Boom. Because honestly, I did have a schedule, but then I didn't expect that, you know, places could be like far from each other. Yes. So I was running around and I was like, okay, I need to be better prepared next year and actually choose the programs that I could actually go to. Because I okay. kind of missed a few programs just because I don't know where it was. Right, I know. So I need to know the <laughs> map better probably. But definitely have a schedule and come with your friends. I feel oh. like Comic-Con is about, you know, being with friends who also appreciate like, you know, art, media, entertainment, like all these things. Yeah. So yeah, have your own group with you. That's cool. I just came here by myself this year. But so, it seems to be going well. But I found new friends like okay, you guys. Good. Good. So it's been amazing. Though. That's awesome. Okay, so you guys heard it back home that, or you know, wherever you're watching, maybe you're in your car. Um, but you heard it there that a schedule is very important, which one of our previous guests also said. And even yeah. if you can't stick to the schedule, at least you have a skeleton, and then you can pivot within there. Absolutely. Because there are panels. There are. 
um, activations that are happening outside of the convention center. Yeah. There are signings, there are meetups, yeah. you know? So yeah, I think it's just, I think we hit the point home. I think you got it. Um, okay. This is so cool. I want to dive yes. in and chat a little bit. So let's talk about new filmmakers LA. So yeah. I had my first experience with them a couple months ago. I went to a screening there That's amazing. and yeah, I saw Riley. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, shout out to Loris Carano, yes. uh, a friend, and she's uh, producing No Rules, a film that I'm working on as well. Oh, and she amazing. also produced Riley. So we love new filmmakers. Um, so it's a really, I noticed that the culture around it was just, very, I don't know, it felt really expansive. It felt like you guys were really... Yeah trying to meet people and bring people in, Absolutely. which um, in, a, in a big city such as Los Angeles, you know, in the entertainment industry, it can feel a little bit daunting. Yeah. So I love that that is happening. So New Filmmakers LA is also a part of the League of Filmmakers. Yeah. Shout out to the League, which is so exciting. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit more. I would love to know specifically for you doing like programs and events and things. Yeah. What does your day-to-day -day look like? And yeah, kind of how do you love to contribute there? Like what, yeah, what's your work there? I'd love Absolutely. To know more. So for me, I'm more of the front facing part of the organization. So I do go to a lot of like industry events and I promote the organization to, you know, people in the industry and also filmmakers. Oh, cool. Okay. So what we do at Filmmaker, New Filmmakers LA, as you know, that we support and provide a platform for independent filmmakers mm -hmm. to showcase their work to a global audience. Awesome. So that is like our, you know, goal Yeah. as to why we do what we do. And since we screen a lot of films every year, we get a chance to, you know, show a lot of stories from underrepresented voices mm -hmm. that, you know, we desperately need in this industry. Mm -hmm. And um, what I love about what we do is that um, aside from, you know, showing people's films, we mm -hmm. connect the filmmakers to industry executives oh, who can cool. help them, you know, propel their careers forward. That so is I feel awesome. like, you know, us being filmmakers as well, we understand the system. Mm -hmm. So we can create a system that actually serves, you know, the filmmakers and also the industry. That's so, so cool. Okay, yeah. this is kind of a silly question that I have now, but I yeah. really want to know. Tell me. You go to so many events, right? Yes. Okay. So yes. how do you remember people? <laughs> like, do you have, <laughs> I know we're talking about like Comic-Con tips and tricks, right? but like, do you, if someone enthusiastically comes up to you and is right. like, Francesca, hi, um, do you have any tools in your tool chest as to how you interact with someone who you don't maybe don't remember or yeah. how did you have a trick to remember names or anything like that? Well, honestly, like if a person introduces themselves to me, like if you do have a personality, I would easily remember you. Yeah. So I feel like when you go to these things, do have something to say that people would remember you. Oh, that's and, good. You know, you know what I mean? And, but I, I suck at names sometimes. Yeah. But honestly, I follow people on Instagram, like once we connect like on Instagram or LinkedIn, Perfect. then I get to know more about you. And then eventually I would remember you that I met you at this event. Okay, cool. And honestly, like social media is very powerful. Yes. So meet people in person, but then connect with them, you know, on social media and eventually meet them again in person. Right. So. I think, I know that's, I, it's honestly, it's, if you think about it, you know, going to parties, yeah. 10 years ago, you wouldn't have that like literal, I mean, I know Facebook is called Facebook, but it is, it's yeah. a book of people's faces so that you can yeah. put that together and connect those dots. Right. That's actually really helpful. I, I, um, I really like that idea too of what, I love what you said about yeah. have something um, if, especially if you're going to a networking event, yeah. have something memorable to say Absolutely. as just like a hook, even if, you know, you're going in, if you have a project that you're working on, um, and it can be like that quick little log line. A or, log line. Yeah. Absolutely. Or like, right? I mean, I love to do comedy. And so yeah. if someone met me, I could be like, you know, I'm an actor, filmmaker, and, you know, I'm... I do drama, but like I'm a comedy gal. That's me. I mean, you could even just say something that become like 
your catchphrase. Absolutely. <laughs> your tagline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As Which a person. I think it's so cool. I, I really do need to workshop mine, but you know, it's fine. We're getting there. But I just, I, I think that that's really, really, that's really powerful. Yeah. Um, and also yeah. having that kind of match your social media. So Absolutely. you're like, I remember this person. I met yeah. them. And I'm, you know, I'm really talking to filmmakers, you know, maybe actors, directors, yeah. writers who are looking to build a recognizable brand, I guess. Absolutely. I feel like all of us have our own brands as filmmakers because we do have different voices, right? Yeah. So maybe that could be what's unique about you, yes. which usually is. So just, you know, say it out loud. Oh, I love that. And I'll remember you. Yes. So there. Oh my gosh. This is making yeah. me so excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Oh, I, I, mean, I love, I love like I networking. look up to you. You're inspiring. You see what I mean? It's just, oh. I remember you just like that. And Thank we you. just met. We did. We did know? just meet. Thank you, Francesca. But, yeah, you're amazing. That's so. so sweet. I mean, also I'm wearing a very loud print. So hey. <laughs> I very Comic-Con. Very Comic-Con. See? Thank love you. That. Thank you. Um, okay. This is so, this is so great. I want to know um, what, I mean, it's, I feel like it kind of may, maybe is like a no brainer, but what really drew you to wanting to help emerging artists? Because I want to talk about your, you yeah. know, um, indie filmmaking, and I want to talk about the multi-hyphenate that you are. <laughs> but before we get there with New Filmmakers LA, I'd love to know what drew you to, yeah, helping emerging, um, you know, creators like Blossom. Yeah. Well, it was started by, you know, Larry. Um, yes. He moved here from New York. And he wanted to build like a community in Los Angeles, you know, of like um, voices, I mean, like films of people who we don't really see in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. So that was really like the driving force behind his vision of like creating a community mm -hmm. and giving more, you know, uh, giving a spotlight to independent filmmakers mm -hmm. who, you know, are actually very talented, but then, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't have the resources or the connections yeah. to get themselves out there. So that yeah. is a huge part of like us helping emerging filmmakers because mm -hmm. we do have the resources. Ugh. We do have the platform. That. So why, what are we doing to help these people and yeah. like to use our platform to, you know, help each other to, you know, tell more stories that are that that deserve to be heard, honestly. Yes. So. And so with that, on that note, how can filmmakers watching engage with new filmmakers LA? So I'm yeah. curious to know what um, you know, is is do you have any programs coming up? Is there an application online? Do they email you? Yeah. What would you say for that? So as you know, we're a monthly film festival. Perfect. We do it every month. Awesome. So there is always an opportunity to submit your films and we don't have a deadline. So just make sure to submit any time and we'll program it through the year. Okay, cool. So it's on film ongoing. freeway too. Great. It's ongoing. That, so, well, yeah, that makes very sense. accessible. Okay. This is really cool, especially because some film festivals, you have to wait all year, all year. and you're just sitting by your computer hitting refresh. Yeah. I have no experience with that. Just kidding, I do. Um, Same here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I do. So yeah. it, yes, it's monthly. And then yes. also you can tune in, you can go monthly, yeah. see new films, yes. engage. Isn't there usually like a cute little photo yes. moment? You can take a picture. Absolutely. We have the red carpet for you yes. every month. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Every month. Don't we love a photo op? I mean, absolutely. Hello. I do. Okay. I want to talk about you as the writer, director, multiple things yeah. that you do. So we talked a little bit already off camera about yeah. uh, social impact storytelling. Absolutely. And I would love to know, um, you know, how a lot of your independent film projects revolve around this idea of these stories that kind of at the end when you like – cut them together like this is a social impact film so right. I would love to know how you get how you got there and what brought you into that yeah so I became a writer first and foremost not for the prestige nor, <laughs> nor the credits you know it's because I want to empower people and also you know make an impact on people's lives yeah 
So my work mostly revolves around social impact stories that shed light on mental health, mm. social inequality, relationships, you know, cultural identity mm. and like individuality. So cool. So me as a writer, director and producer, that's always my goal in every project that I work on. I always ask myself, how can I use my, you know, privilege, um, mm. resources and also just you know, my platform to help people mm -hmm. to just get themselves out there and also just have, you know, sympathy for their stories. Yes. Because again, there are so many stories out there that we never hear mm -hmm. just because like we're focusing mostly on like commercial film. Uh, sure. Right. So there. Sure. No, I, I think that that's, I think that that is so important. And I would love to know, is there a uh, one of your films in particular that like you could tell us a little bit about uh, that you, you know, in the vein of social impact, yeah. like maybe, maybe give us the log line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did work on a few films that I'm very proud of. Like um, one was about Alzheimer's disease. Yes. So just raising awareness on, you know, people suffering from this disease because there's no cure mm. as of the moment. Mm. I think they're working on it, but you know, there's still not a cure about that. Mm -hmm. And another one is about shedding light on differently able, uh, disabled communities. Mm -hmm. And the other one is about mental health, which I just mm -hmm. wrapped recently. Congrats. Um, thank you. Yes. But it is a story. I feel like I would discuss more on the mental health project that I yeah. did because it's the first project that I directed. Oh my gosh. Yes. And it's something that I wrote as well. We love a directorial yeah. debut. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in post right now, but it is about um, a story about grief and loss. Mm. A very personal story, mm. but it's about two artists at a crossroads because of conflicting dreams and ambitions in life. So I wanted to explore the dynamics between like two artists, you know, navigating a relationship together. Oh, I love that. And also the anxious and avoidant attachment, if you've heard about that in oh, psychology. Yes, I have. So, I actually was looking at a yeah. chart last week. Stop. In preparation for no. Comic-Con. Anxious? <laughs> <laughs> secure? <laughs> Am I, do I have a secure attachment to Comic-Con? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. No. Oh, yes. No. And yeah. maybe for our viewers, just quickly uh, explain um, about those attachment styles in your film. So... The two protagonists, basically, they have opposing attachment styles. Okay. And this is what usually happens in relationships. If you mm. really look at like relationships that are not secure, there's always one that's avoidant. There's always one that's very anxious. Mm. And it's because like you feed off of each other's triggers. Wow. So I learned so much about this just because of like me going through the same thing as well. Wow. And just, you know, researching about psychology. Like for me psychology is very interesting especially as a writer yeah because like most of the characters that i you know created in my head mm -hmm. are based on like psychological you know like infj mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know all of these things that very it's very just very interesting about a person and that's yeah. what makes a character very multi-dimensional when they're like people mm -hmm. so some of my yeah. favorite films are when you're watching uh an actor in a private moment and yes. you're seeing yes. their their process like their their shame their embarrassment their yeah. joy the thing that that us as these like you know creatures yeah. soulful creatures in these bodies yeah uh that we do i just i think that's that's really powerful and also yeah. talking about attack like attacking characters from an attachment style is yeah. so fascinating absolutely to kind of come at it like in that way as a writer and it's also amazing because now that i did wrap the film mm. and going through rehearsals mm. i literally sent my actors a breakdown of just what the attachment styles are are like wow and the good thing about this is that my actors also went through the same struggles. So mm. kind of like we have that shared trauma, there's always a line that I'm going to say now first mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. that we were united by grief, but healed by art. Mm. Oh my God. So it was beautiful. such a beautiful journey, just wow. bringing to life all the characters and just the story. That's because so I cool. feel like it was, it was meant to happen for us to heal from whatever 
grief we went through in life. Mm. So. Yeah, that's, that's what really makes cool. it very personal. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. And that specificity also makes yeah. it universal. Absolutely. Right? And I never thought it was very universal because, again, it was about an avoidant and an anxious person. Apparently, like a lot of people yeah. are in those type of relationships. Oh, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't so that very interesting? You make the art and then all of a sudden your audience shows up. Yeah. You know, that's so yeah. cool. Very quickly, too. Oh, oh. I was like... This is amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. So I would love you to tell our beautiful viewers. Hello, viewers. I would love you to tell them where we can find you, uh, how we can follow your work, and then maybe just anything you're excited about coming up. Well, you can follow me uh, definitely on Instagram, uh, Francesca Escarago, or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, or go to our film festival. It's monthly. The next one is on August 3rd at, uh, in downtown LA. Oh, cool. So if you're available, you know, just come come hang out with us. I We're fun people, it. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> agreed. I was there. Yeah. I can confirm. Yeah. This is so great, Francesca. Thank you so much for being on. Like, I'm just so glad that this is your first con I know. and you're doing Credit it alone. Here. And yeah. but but not alone. She's got us. Seriously. And she's got thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course, you're so welcome. Thanks and for having me here, oh honestly. Gosh. Yes. Absolutely. And we yeah. are um gonna be sad it's like so sad this is like you know the shortest interviews i mean True. look see it's okay next year we'll we'll figure it out but i just Definitely. i so appreciate you being on yeah. and have a great rest of your con thank and you. to everyone back home we will see you shortly thank you francesca for being no, here thank you yay yes. okay we'll see you soon thanks bye